Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. This has been a highly requested video and I mean absolutely gigantic. I had no idea that so many people were into the idea of buying art. For those of you who may be new to the channel as you're maybe seeing this video for the first time, this channel is typically centered around cryptocurrencies. Uh, but as this is also an investment channel, um, and just even realizing that there was such a, I mean, really, like, within the last couple of weeks, I've seen an enormous amount of people just asking me to make this video. So I'm going to try my best. Um, I'm probably going to miss a couple of things because it's not as simple as simply saying, throw your money into it and therefore you'll make money. Um, so if I should miss anything, let me know and I'll try to cover it in the next one. This must also be prefaced by, I am not, and nor have I ever been an official regulated financial advisor. I do not have any document certifications. I have done everything in my own life by myself, by learning by myself on the internet. The internet is a free tool that you all can use. Please do not ever throw your money into something that you do not understand before you put your money into any type of an investment. Make sure that you can afford to lose that money. And I mean that in complete honesty. If you put your money into something and it goes to zero tomorrow, you have to be completely okay with that. That is how Crypto works, that is how real estate works, and that is how art works. So without further ado, let's jump into it. I got into investing in art around 2016. I want to say it was early 2016. It was one of the things that I had jumped into even before I got into cryptocurrencies. I was into crypto 2012, 2013, but I wasn't really deeply into it. One of the main things that I started out doing when it came to looking for ways to invest in art, which I had Googled for a very long time, I'm pretty sure a lot of you have also maybe tried to Google it. Some things can be difficult to find. You get it by being in it for a while. Whenever you would search for articles or whenever I would search for articles about investing in art, one of the main things that kept on popping up is this. For those of you not looking at the screen, it says billionaire secrets on how to make a bundle in art. I kept on seeing news constantly over and over about how you needed tens of millions, hundreds of millions, thousands of millions of billions of trillions of dollars in order to be able to invest in the art market. That is 1 million percent false. I started in the very beginning by looking for paintings. I'm not joking. I was looking for paintings from Odigliani, from Picasso. And I kept on coming to the same conclusion. I don't have $14 million to throw into a painting. This was a very big issue for me. And I'm not even joking. I was very flustered and frustrated a lot of times because I was like, how do I get into this market? I actually don't remember the exact day that it happened, but I remember looking around for ways to invest in not underground artists, but it was more like a, how do I put money into this so that I can also make money as well? And that's what I'm going to go over here to let you all know the same exact way when we were first discussing when I first started the cryptocurrency channel that you don't need a million dollars to be able to invest in crypto and you don't need tons of money to be able to invest in real estate. I said that in a video about two years ago as well. A lot of people come to the conclusion once again and other people have told them if you want to invest in real estate, you need millions of dollars. You need hundreds of millions of dollars, if not at least 1.5 million to be able to buy your first place. That is a lie. I have bought property in Europe before for 10,000 euros. That is not a joke. It wasn't making me a spectacular amount of money per month. I think I was making 180 a month from that property. It still cost 10,000. It was renovated. It was beautiful. It was in a nice area. It was a little, not a small town, but like a small city. It definitely works. I've also bought places in many other countries as well. You just have to look for bargains. You have to know where to buy. You have to not be afraid to buy studios and not worry about buying a five-bedroom, six-bedroom duplex, triplex as your first property. Start out small because the money is still there. You will make money if you do your research and just put in the time and effort. Now, this will sound completely ridiculous, but bear with me. One of the other things that I kept on seeing, and this I think was probably the most frustrating for me. I'm pretty sure if you've looked into getting into art before, you probably were looking for or Googled or searched, what art should I buy? What artist should I buy? How do I buy art? How do I buy art that's profitable? And the thing that kept on popping up for me over and over was this statement, buy art you love. 
And I remember, oh my gosh, how angry I used to get. You don't want to hear about what you love when you're trying to make money. You're trying to make money because you're trying to make money. And I kept on seeing buy art that you love. And I'm here to tell you, if you keep seeing this phrase over and over, it's because it's true. When you first get into investing in art, you think, and you will think, I promise you, that there are only five artists on this planet and you have to only buy from those five artists. I have news for you. There are at least, myself, I focus on around 25 to 30 different artists. The art world has changed dramatically over the last five to 10 years because of social media. A lot of people who weren't big before are gigantic now. Their pieces are major investments in my portfolio. It's really about, there are, so, and, I'll, and, and I'll put it to you this way. Once again, this is not investment advice. I'm not telling you where to put your money. It's more of a, this is the information. When you are looking for art to buy, certain artists will catch your eye. The most important thing for you to do is to do research on that one artist to check to see how well they've done in the past. That is probably the most sound advice I could give anyone out there. I make sure now that I buy from artists who I legitimately love. I love how weird they are. I love how kooky they are. I love that they put spheres onto statues that make no sense, that they make bags out of other people's artwork. Like, it's this really weird... You eventually find artists who talk to you. It's more a matter of you will find multiple of them. Just make sure if you're doing this as an investment that they have been performing. I try to go for at least... 10 to 15 years. If they've been on a good streak for 10 to 15 years and their original other pieces have been making really good money, you are in the clear. And this is usually an indication that you can start putting money into it. I usually check, and I'll show you some other resources as well in a couple of minutes. I'll show you other resources as well where you can check an artist, what they've released, everything that they've released, and if the price of that article or articles that that artist has subsequently put out there have increased in value. That for me is the most important. So it's usually, I may find something that catches my eye, but then I also go, okay, have you been doing well? And if I find that that artist who I already liked what they're doing has done extremely well over the course of a 10 year period, this is usually when I start putting money into what they have done. So this is where it all begins. Like I said, if I miss anything, because I'm pretty sure that I'm going to, this is art is one of my, I, did, I never expected to be able to invest in art. Uh, so if I get ahead of myself or behind myself in this video, if I miss something, please let me know in the comment section so that I can make a potentially a second and or third video to kind of let people get all the information that they need to be able to get into this. For those of you not looking at the screen, there's a list of artists right here. Do not write these artists down unless you want to, I, I guess. Like I mentioned before, a lot of people think when they are getting into the crypto, crypto, I'm used to saying that, sorry. When they're getting into the art market, that they have to focus on certain artists. This is not true. When I started getting into the art market, I looked for pieces, once again, Andy Warhol, Basquiat, George Kondo, Rothko. I actually like Rothko stuff. I think it's very, I think it's very odd. Keith Haring, Mitchell, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to try and show you other places to be able to find your artists. I will tell you the truth right now. I will not tell you my artists. One, I'll be honest with you. I don't want you buying what I'm already buying. I like my artists because I can easily access their work. I don't want a f flood of people buying up what I would like to buy. But also, once again, I started out with three artists and I now have around 30. I have a list of artists who I check periodically all over the place to make sure to see what they are coming out with, what they have come out with, et cetera, et cetera. The first website that you should write down is called Art Collectors, and that is A-R-T-C-O-L-L-E-C-T-O-R-Z. Or for those of you in the States, with a Z, artcollectors.com. I've had a couple of times where I've tried to actually type in the name of this, on the actual search bar and I can't find it, but when I go through Google or search engine, I end up finding it. So art collectors with a Z or Z at the very end. I don't know who created this website. I was in contact with them when they first created this actually, because uh, I was using another website, but this one's a little bit prettier. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. 
they list all the artwork that has come out from artists. And it's typically major artists and or very well-known artists. You may notice that the names around here are dramatically different from the Warhol, Basquiat, George Kondo. I would suggest to you as another major point, if you are going to collect art, especially if you're trying to do it at a lower price point, I would suggest trying to buy from artists who are still alive. Why do I say that? The artwork is a lot less expensive. You also, I know it sounds cheesy, but you'll appreciate it one day. You get to kind of evolve with that artist. You see what they've created, where they've been, how their styles have changed. And also a lot of artists tend to go very unappreciated as they are live. And the moment they pass, the art usually skyrockets in value. This does not happen for every single artist. However, there's a track record. If your artist was incredibly popular when they were alive, they tend to do even better once they have passed. A couple of names you may notice as I'm scrolling by. Um, Sweet Tooth. Once again, this is not me telling you to buy them. But these are very popular artists. Ne nearly every single thing that we're scrolling by on here has a proven track record of at least a couple of years of doing very well. Ron English is another very popular one. A lot of these have become more popular because of, what's it called? Because of social media. Um, those who had a bit of interest before have really like skyrocketed over the last couple of years. I would definitely suggest this website. I think you can even like click on um, Pure Evil is also a very interesting one as well. He typically does art where it shows like a a figure, some famous figure crying. Let's see if I can show you his actual portfolio of the things that he's done. Um, these, these are websites that typically only people who collect art in mass know about. So understand that I'm showing you resources that a lot of other people uh, probably tried to keep for themselves. Yeah, he's, he's typically known for doing this. Like very famous figures with like a, a tear of some sort um, going down their face. Let's see if I can find you some other artists on this list. So this one doesn't have the same price metric for the next website that I'm going to show you. But it's, like I said, it's a lot prettier, it's a lot more organized, and you get a full run-through of like everything massive that has just been released by other major figures within the art space. Um, Cleon Peterson, this guy right here is also, he's incredibly political, but his work is absolutely amazing. Oh, another really good thing to do as well, when I talk about actually doing research, I don't mean research as far as like, oh yeah, they're good, they're still alive, I'm gonna buy their stuff. See where they've been before and what they've done. Cleon Peterson has actually made, I wouldn't call it a mural because it was on the ground. Like he has made things below the Eiffel Tower before. Like his stuff is like in world leaders offices. Like these, these, these types of connections and who they know inside the art world as well and the stuff that they've done and also the price metrics for all their work are also incredibly um, important as well. Another thing, um, I guess which I was going to get into a bit later, but since it's right here, for those of you who don't know what bear bricks are, I would also look into what a bear brick is. It's pretty much this little bear toy thing that come in different sizes. There's a 100% size, a 400 and a 1000%, and sometimes I think it's like a 5000%. They're absolutely massive. Um, these have also taken off in popularity as well. These are released as limited edition bear brick type things. Um, I don't remember the exact number that's released per set that ends up coming out, but they have exploded in popularity. And there, if you Google, no, no, if you Instagram the hashtag bear brick, you'll see people have entire rooms and like mini museums just full of bear brick things. Um, Piet Para is also a very big one. He's an artist from the Netherlands. You kind of get the point. You see where all this stuff is going. These are all major artists who put stuff out there who have done uh, very well for themselves over the last couple of years. The other website, which many people do not know about, and I'm annoyed with myself for giving you this information, is called Espresso Beans. It is E-X-P-R-E-S-S-O beans.com. You can Google it, search it, you will definitely find it. It's not as pretty as the other one, but the difference with this website is, is that they actually give you price metrics for the works of artists. So this one will just simp they'll show you exactly like what the artwork is. And I think it says uh, the price that it came out for once this ends up loading. Yeah, it says like the first edition, the size of it, 
how many were released in the edition and the price on release, but it won't show you the actual price metrics. Another thing, once again, sorry for getting slightly ahead. If you are going to start investing in this way, even more so, this, this, once again, this piece was $60 to start out with. You'll see why that's important as we go forward. Um, try to look for things that are limited in numbers, and I know it's very difficult to do. Uh, the, the amount of people who are going to watch this video and the amount of people who are already investing in art, this is why it's important to have a wide ray, array range of artists you are who you are collecting from. There are going to be many times when you are trying to collect something that is limited. There were only two. There are 7.4 billion people on this planet. There are at least 50 million people on this planet who collect art in some form or fashion. And this only had 290 pieces that were made. Think of that. There are many famous artists who when they release things, they have an edition size of 250. Only 100 are made. Only 50 are made. And sometimes they'll even have stuff where only 75 or 15 are made. So you may get frustrated sometimes as you're trying to pick up stuff and you realize that there are other artists you can also still collect from. Espresso Beans has been around for a while. I'm not exactly sure how long. It looks very old internet-y before things kind of got really updated. But they show the prices of the items from when they were released to the actual sales that have happened from these items on the internet. For those of you who do not know Cause... Cause is probably one of the most, I'll use the word popular, hyped up artists out there right now. He was relatively popular a couple of years ago. He started out as a graffiti artist in New York City. I think it was, I think he moved to New York City, became a, a, a graffiti artist. Last five to 10 years have been very good to him. He makes a number of figures, which is also something that we're also going to get into as well. His, you can even see right here, the original price was $280. And on Espresso Beans, you can actually see the price metrics for where his stuff has gone since this one item was released. I'm going to see if I can show you some of his, his other works as well. Cause typically does very well. The issue with Cause, though, is that some of his things can be very expensive from the get-go. And a lot of his stuff is very... This isn't a proper price metric. This stuff is actually worth a lot more. His stuff is faked a lot. So don't use him as the best representation or example. It was more so to show, more so to show you the actual prices on this website. Check social media. You can check the strength or the popularity of an artist by how many posts usually they have floating around them. This is one of the main things that I use as well. I rather I've I've stopped using this metric, but it's something to get into in the very beginning. You learn very quickly how popular an artist is. And cause is usually, for those of you who know this term, cause is usually associated with hype beasts, people who are sneaker heads. Uh, so he has a very big market, and I think he will continue to do so for a very long time. I myself don't collect a lot of cause. I have a lot of his sculptures as they're called and or figurines and or art toys as people sometime, sometimes call them but I actually use a number of other artists but Cause is a very big artist to actually look into if you want to start getting a legitimate large artist just showing you the actual so on the topic of not having to spend a lot of money this is why I got into art I'll tell you right now uh I have not told anyone else this except for, I think, three people, basically family members or people very close to me. A lot of the artists that I got into have performed incredibly well. There was one artist in particular. I, hmm, how do I phrase this? I got very lucky. There was something that was going to release on a Friday, and I managed to pick it up on a Thursday because I speak French. Uh, it was releasing on a French website. I went to that website early to see if they already had the item up so I could see how much it had cost. I saw the item on the website and it was selling for 50 euros. I was like, cool, I bought one. And I told someone else who I know to also buy one as well. That item, not this one currently on the screen, um, became very popular. It was actually, uh, there were a number of celebrities who actually ended up getting painted commissions of that one piece of art that I got. It was an art print. So it was a piece of paper like this person is holding up. And that piece that I bought went from 50 euros <laughs> over the course of a two-year period. It ended up hitting $6,000 for that one piece of art, 
for those of you, you should all hopefully be looking at the screen. I hope no one is, I want everyone to actually get all of this uh, in its full capacity. There's an artist called Pajak Payak. I have no idea how to really uh, pronounce his name. This piece came out <clears throat> in 2016. It was originally priced around $342, <coughs> roughly around 300 euros. I, I believe Pijak Piak is European. For those of you not looking at the screen, the price has done extremely well because most of his pieces do extremely well. This was a run of 80 pieces. And the price is now worth several thousand US dollars just for this one piece of paper right here. This is not something that's rare. This is something that happens quite often. And like I said, what I'm showing you is also, you may not realize it, people don't know about these websites. People don't know about these metrics of finding prices and how to figure out exactly which artist you should be paying attention to. This is very important because you will slowly realize that there are many artists who do well, but many artists outperform other artists immensely. And it, it, it becomes a way, you, once you find, I, I would recommend you to find about five to 10 artists. It can, whether it can be on Espresso Beans, it can be on Instagram, it can be go through Google, finding out um, who's doing very well. I would stay away from anything that is made by Forbes, Sotheby's, Bloomberg's, Bloomberg, Christie's, uh, and I think Bonhams. These are all like um, auction houses and or rich news publications. They'll steer you in the wrong direction. They'll make you think that you have to spend tons of money to be able to do things like this. It's not true at all. This one is from a very famous artist named um, Tyler Stout. So one of the other things that perplexed me at the very beginning that made me very angry. And I, I won't even use the word angry. Angry is, a, angry is very strong is that I was trying to look for major artists. I was trying to look for the Warhols. I was trying to look for the Picassos. And then I kept on stumbling upon websites that had like art posters. I don't know if you can see this poster, poster set right here. And I, in my mind, and I'll be honest with you, not that it looked childish to me, my idea of art was something very different. When I go to the Louvre and I look at art there, you typically don't see art like this around because once again, you're told that that's what art is, not realizing that art comes in many different forms. Even the, like, this came out in 2010, and I would recommend looking into Tyler Stout as someone to potentially collect. A lot of his stuff is very popular. He's a great artist, and his stuff performs very well over the course of a, 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 an extended period of time. Remember when I was talking about the actual five to 10 year metric? His original piece, these three, came out for 50 each, $150 for all three. It says the six month average for it is around $2,000. That's an incredible return for three pieces of paper that were $50 each. Espresso Beans will also have the actual uh, prices for other things that have happened on the internet as well. So you may see here that it says highest price is 2,921. They also make sure to record other prices that have also happened on the internet as well. And for this poster set right here, the highest price was $5,000. Somewhere on the internet, someone bought them for 5,000. Uh, also for me and the reason you will, everyone will have different ways of investing. And I'll put it to you this way. When a lot of really popular art comes out, there are a lot of people who are resellers. I myself am not a reseller and I will tell you why just on this little photo right here. When popular pieces of art come out, people tend to buy them, the resellers, they'll buy them for 150 and the price will spike. You see, when it first came out, this is a thousand. This is around 13, 14, 1500. People sold them almost immediately. All these numbers right here, people tend to sell them for double the price, triple the price. There's a couple of artists who I collect right now. And I know that the moment that I have, get, have gotten a piece and other people start reselling them, it's actually, I, I don't mind collecting multiples of things, which I also, I'm, I'm also going to try and get into in one second as well. I know that the long term holding of that piece of art is going to be more beneficial for me monetarily than simply selling it off immediately. There's a big difference in buying something for 150 and selling it for 300 or 450 and holding it until it sells for 5,000 or holding it in general. Like everything I hold, real estate, art, crypto, is all for the long term. I plan on keeping these things forever and or passing them on to my kids. When it comes to actually collecting multiples of stuff, don't be afraid of this as well. I think a lot of people 
confuse or rather misconstrue exactly what it means to collect. I remember seeing, and I will never forget this, and this is why I collect multiples. Before I really got into investing in art and into crypto, I used to sell things on eBay in mass. And I mean, it was ridiculous. And I used to make sure if I saw that there was a, so for those of you who don't know, they are very limited edition comic books. And I mean like hyper, super limited edition. Sometimes they'll have a second, third, and or f fifth print. Sometimes for those of you who don't know, there was a comic book. Um, there's, a, there's a comic book character called Kamala Khan. And I think she's the new, Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel, she's one of the women Marvel people. When the second print of that comic came out, I remember, I think it was selling for over $150 on the internet because it was, no one had ordered it. It was super limited. And I ran to the store, saw that they had some, and I bought one. And I remember I went home, I think the comic was $3, $2.99 to buy. And I think I sold it that same evening for, I think, $185. And I was like, woo! And then I sat there and I was like, why, why did I buy all four copies that they had at the store? Like, what was I thinking to only run inside there, buy one, and then run home immediately to put it on eBay? I did actually go to the store and ended up buying uh, every single copy that they had the next day. But I remember starting to see posts on, on Instagram. I was, I was hashtagging comics and stuff all the time. And I realized that usually when a really hot comic came out, I would go to the store. I would pick up one, maybe two. And I started seeing people on the internet who had like 300 copies of them. And, if you, and, and, and I would sit there thinking, well, they were $2.99 a piece. And those issues are selling for $150. Some of them are still worth even a lot more right now. And long story short, when things like this come out, usually you're restricted to buying one copy from the website. Like I said, 7.4 million people, millions of people who are actually buying art, limited to 850. However... Um, resellers typically in my eyes make the rapid mistake of reselling for such a lower price, especially if they're like a really popular artist who continues to do exceptionally well, you know, that holding on to that, that they sold for a lower price will benefit you later on. And I guess the last one that we're going to really look at, um, everyone should know the name Banksy. This is a, I would recommend, and I mean this. If you can get anything that is legitimately from Banksy, there are an enormous, enormous amount of fakes out there of people faking Banksy's. It is a problem. There are a couple of ways to get legitimate ones, and I would suggest going through art galleries. Sometimes you can even find legitimate Banksy pieces. If you see right here, this one had a run of 2,000 prints. I would go through art galleries. I would avoid eBay like the plague. There are so many fakes on eBay. It is absolutely insane. Make sure if you are buying, especially, I would one, recommend, try to buy directly from the artist. This is very difficult for Banksy, but for other artists, you can usually buy directly from their website. They'll have it on their Instagram. They'll have it on their Twitter. They'll tell you when something is being released, when it's going to drop, when you can go buy it, and that's when you go and attack. Banksy, it's a bit more difficult. His stuff kind of appears and then disappears he just had something a couple of months ago where he was trying to sell some stuff and that was an entire mess because millions of people were flooding his website if you can get any anything that is legitimately banksy you are going to probably do incredibly well on the screen this poster it is a print it is a piece of paper came out in 2011 the original price was five us dollars it says here that the highest price was 659. I've seen this sell a couple of times on many major auction houses or many also online auction houses as well, not eBay. Like actual legitimate ones that only sell like art. They make sure that it's uh, legitimate and they give like a certificate of authenticity as well. For at least 2000, 2200. I've seen these numbers hit before. It's also another really, I know it kind of burns, but think of a moment where this was $5 in the very beginning. If you had bought 10 of these, you kind of see where that's going. So this is my, myself. I think it also has to do with greed. I think I'm a very greedy investor. Uh, I tried to always buy multiples of a lot of things. Like I've bought, um, there's another artist. Uh, his name is Damien Hurst. I don't know if anyone knows of him or about him. 
Uh, he is the guy who's famous for making the, the diamond skull. I kind of put it that way. Uh, his prints are kind of expensive. They're more expensive than $5, I'll tell you that much. Uh, but the performance on his art is absolutely insane. I bought something, I'll tell you because you're my friends, I bought something from Damien Hurst four or five years ago. The print was, I believe, around 1100 And I think a couple of... No, it was about a year or two later. I think it was, I think it sold at Sotheby's for I think five or 6,000, like the, you know, a, a version of the same one that I had, like in, in the numbered edition. Um, so I also managed to pick up another one of that same exact piece for a very low price. And also, I mean, yeah, the art market is incredibly weird. Um, this last article is more of a way to kind of bring it all home for all of you. The article says, meet the young collector who bought the complete Supreme skateboard collection. You will think, and I'm sure you have thought, when it comes to getting into art that you need to collect masterpieces, masterworks, the great artists, people who lived two, three, four, five hundred 500 years ago. If that's what you want, you can most certainly do it. It may be a lot more expensive than you are looking to get into the art market, However, for those of you who don't know Supreme, it's a clothing store brand accessory place. I think once a week, I'm not trying to hype up Supreme. It's more like a, uh, you can make really good money off of their stuff. Supreme has a big following of people for what they call skate decks, skateboards. This is the photo of it right here. Do not be afraid to invest in skate decks, skateboards. They perform incredibly well, especially if you are buying from major artists. The main things that I focus on when it comes to being in the art market, I sometimes try to buy originals, which if you can do from a major artist who has performed very well over the last 10 years, and it's within your price point, I would suggest doing so. I focus on prints, like I just showed you. These are prints. I think I, uh, I have a couple of these. No, please don't hate me. I have a couple of these as well. I focus on prints. I focus on skate decks, which do extremely well. I think this entire collection of Supreme skate decks, I think it sold, what was it, was it over a million? I don't know the exact number that it, that it sold for. It's very lucrative. I can only talk from a perspective of someone who is buying and holding for the long term. The resale market on art is incredible. If you're looking to make a quick buck, go for it. My portfolio and the way that I invest is set up so that my stuff is held for the next 30 years. That when I have kids, that they will then absorb my stuff after I have passed on into the afterlife somewhere. Don't be afraid of buying sculptures or people call them art toys, like stuff from Cause. These are also very, very popular. Cause has, Cause kind of exploded into popularity when um, these kind of figures that you see over here, he released four foot versions of them. I'm going to see if they actually have them on, on the website, like if they have them listed without me having to click back 95 different pages. Is it, no, this is a companion. They won't have the actual one. No. Um, he released a four foot version of this, and I think the four foot version, I think it was originally $1,500, and now they sell for six figures. Don't be afraid of buying toys, plushes. As long as they're from a major artist, you are usually completely in the clear. Don't assume that you just have to buy paintings. There's a whole wide range of ways to actually get into the art market. I feel like I missed a lot of stuff. I'm sure a lot of you still have tons of questions. Tell me in the comment section below what I missed, what you would like to hear. I hope that I can answer it in the next one. Um, you don't need tons of money to get into art. Start right now by looking for tons of artists. I would even say on Instagram. If you don't have an Instagram, you can still use Instagram without having an Instagram, I think. Um, try to find artists that stick out to you. And then use, I would suggest using Espresso Beans as your metric for if that artist has done well in the past. Like this artist, typically everything that he releases does incredibly well. So, yeah, I'm sure I'm missing a whole bunch of stuff. I really apologize. I'm sure I'm missing gaps in the stuff that I even wanted to say. I was just really excited to actually make this video. Um
Investing in art is incredibly easy, and I think it's actually the easiest that it's ever been in the entirety of history because of social media, because of the internet. There's so many places, so many resources where you can go buy stuff, you can make sure to check out stuff. Make sure, and I re stay, stay away from eBay. I, I, I can't say that enough. Like, I cannot say it enough. I bought a couple of um, pieces in the very beginning, and I remember when I wanted extra multiples of them, and I went onto eBay to look at the stuff that people were selling, and I remember just zooming into the photo, I could tell immediately that it was a different type of paper. Um, if you're going to buy stuff on eBay, I would recommend you do it like three minutes after the item has come out. On a lot of websites, you'll see that people will buy up the stuff, it'll say sold out, and then on eBay, you can actually get it. But even then, try to avoid eBay completely. Buy directly from the artist. Uh, provenance is also very important as well. As far as where you got the item from, make sure that you are buying it from a legitimate place, a real auction house, or directly from the artist themselves, because what ends up happening is when you buy the art from directly from the artist themselves or from the website where they're selling, I think Tyler Stout sells on, oh gosh, what is this thing called? He, he sells on a website where they sell a whole bunch of art and movie posters. I can't remember the name of it. You can easily Google it. You'll find him within the first couple of clicks. You actually get the receipt from the website where you bought it from. So years later down the line, no one can say, oh, this is fake. You go, no, I have the actual receipt from that one company. Uh, people tried to get one over me before, and this is why I completely stay away from eBay. Try to buy from the actual artist. Once again, if I miss anything, I apologize. Let me know what I missed. I'll try to uh, do it in the next one. If you have any other questions as to like other things that I, questions I can't even begin to think about right now, let me know. I will try to help. I want everyone. The point of this channel is to make money. I want everyone to make tons of money. Uh, understand that the art world is massive. There's tons of money to be made. I myself have made an immense amount of money. I well, I guess I'll tell you this as well. I have goals, things that I like to do. I give myself like five to 10 year goals. Um, and one of my main goals is to actually um by the end no e even even further than that um or i guess less than that by the end of this decade to have around three to four thousand pieces of art um i have i think at least i want to say 500 600 pieces already i love investing it is it is what i'm here for um right i think that's going to do it for this video once again let me know if i miss anything uh, thank you all once again for watching and or listening. Please know that you do not need millions or billions of dollars to invest. You do not need nine figures to be able to buy real estate. You do not need tons of money to get into the cryptocurrency market. And you don't need an astronomical amount of money uh, to get into the art world. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I'll definitely be talking to you all soon. See you.